If you've checked out my other videos, you've seen me demonstrate the transformative power of color management solutions such as Resolve Color Management and how easy it can be to set them up. But I'm going to let you in on a secret. Embracing color management is not a quick fix or a hot tip. Doing it well requires that we reimagine some of our core assumptions and practices as colorists. So today we're beginning a new series on Resolve Color Management, where I'll show you my end-to-end -end workflow for crafting great grades within this framework. All right, guys. So we are now ready to get into a full grading workflow here inside of Resolve Color Management. And I'm picking up today on a timeline that we left off with in my prior video on ACES versus Resolve Color Management, where we were comparing those two color management frameworks. Today, we're committed. We are dug in. We are going with Resolve Color Management, and we are going to get into a full grading workflow over the course of the next couple of videos. So just to recap where we left off in that prior video, I'm going to go to my file menu, go to my project settings, go to my color management here, and see that my color science is set to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. I have my automatic color management turned off so that I have a few more options here for my color processing mode, allowing me to select HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, which is an excellent default to go with unless you have specific reason to select something else. Finally, I have my output color space set to Rec. 709 Gamma 24 because that's the display that I'm monitoring on. And as you can see, if I compare what I have now to what I had before my color management, which I can do by bypassing my color management, I have a display normalized image. I have a healthy amount of contrast and saturation now that my color management is turned on. And that's my whole goal is to have an overall framework, an overall pipeline that is taking me on that journey from what the camera saw to what my display can show. And one of the conceptual shifts that comes with color management that we really want to take note of and embrace is the idea that macro beats micro. What do I mean when I say that? Well, if I take a look at this timeline, you'll notice that with my color management turned on, I haven't affected just one shot or two shots or three shots. I've actually affected every single shot in my timeline. So we could think of that as a macro level transformation. This concept of macro beats micro essentially says that a transformation which serves more than one image well is more valuable than a transformation which only serves one image. So color management is our first lesson in a principle that I talk about in my new ebook, The Colorist 10 Commandments of macro beats micro. And as we continue into our grading workflow here, we're going to continue to observe that principle and try to incorporate it into the way we work. And even with this color management framework in place, we can actually still benefit from this idea that macro beats micro. So right now we can think of our color management as our macro level technical transformation. And what we want to do next, even before we begin grading individual shots, is we want to accompany this macro level technical transformation with a macro level creative transformation, which is just a fancy way of saying a look. So I want to come up with a manipulation or a set of manipulations that's going to hit all of the images in my timeline and bring all of them a bit closer to my creative intent. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to work in the timeline section of my node graph. As you may know, anything that I do here in this timeline section of my node graph is going to affect all the shots in my timeline, not just one or two or three. So if I create a new serial node and I do a simple offset operation here, for example, you can see as I flip through my shots and I turn that node off and on that it is affecting all of the shots in my timeline. And that's exactly what I want for this look. I want to come up with something that's going to affect all of these shots. However, I do not want my look to be composed of an offset adjustment. So I'm going to reset that for now. And let's talk about how we actually would implement our macro level creative transform or our look. There's lots of different ways to do that. We could design our own right here inside of Resolve. We could use a third party plugin or a plugin built into Resolve, or we could do what I'm going to do today, which is to use a carefully selected LUT. 
Now, I wanna emphasize right off the bat that I said carefully selected, okay? We can't just pick any LUT or go with a LUT that we think might do cool things. LUTs are what we call picky eaters. LUTs need to be fed a particular state of image, and LUTs will only give back a particular state of image. So we need to make sure if we are going to use a LUT here in this Resolve Color Management workflow, we need a LUT with the following characteristics. It expects DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate for its input, and it returns DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate for its output. If we have a LUT that we love or that someone raves about and says we gotta try, but it doesn't meet those criteria, we cannot use it in this workflow, okay? So we need to make sure that we select the LUT that works for us creatively, but that also has the right technical characteristics. What I'm gonna do is go over here to my LUTs folder and look at my options here inside of my CKC, Cullen Kelly Color subfolder. I've got a couple of different LUTs that are set up for this exact workflow, including my free Kodak 2383 LUT, which you can see labeled here as 2383 DWG to DWG. That's DaVinci Wide Gamut to DaVinci Wide Gamut. So it's telling me right there in the name what this LUT expects and what it's going to return back. So if I wanted to see what this LUT looks like for my overall look, I could drop it onto node number one here. And just as we saw with our prior example, I can see it applied to every single shot as I flip through them here in my timeline. And this might be a good candidate for my overall macro level creative transform for all of the shots in this timeline. But as I'm flipping through here, I'm feeling like this look actually isn't quite right. It actually doesn't quite embody the creative vision that I have for this timeline. So I'm gonna keep hunting. And instead of this 2383 LUT, which is available as a free download, by the way, I'm gonna look at my CKC Elements LUTs, which are also available at cullenkellycolor.com. So let's reset these nodes and create a new serial node. And let's look at these Elements LUTs. Now the Elements LUTs are designed to have two parts, a tone and a palette. And you can select one or both of these as you see fit. So in my case, I'm just gonna select Autumn for my tone. And then for my palette, I'm gonna select Sun and see how that feels. And I think that's really nice. So these two LUTs that I'm applying one after the other are giving me a tonal adjustment and then an overall sort of palette adjustment. Nothing too extreme, but I think they're both doing nice things to my images as I flip through. And I think I'm very happy to use these two looks for my overall look for this timeline. And just because I like to keep things organized, I'm gonna label these nodes and I'm gonna say tone, and then we'll call this palette, okay? Now again, I just wanna stress, it doesn't matter where your look comes from. You can build it yourself, you can use a plugin, you can use a reputable LUT. What matters is that you find your look early in the process rather than later. Because as you can imagine, these two adjustments that I've made here for my global or my macro level creative transform are going to change the grading decisions that I make underneath them. So I wanna make my grading decisions within a proper context, and I've now given myself the opportunity to do that. So now that I have, let's go back over to the clip level and do the one other thing that I want to focus on in today's video and in this sort of first pass, this initial stage of grading this timeline. I've got my color management in place, I've got my overall look in place, and I'm now going to do less than you would think. My only goal for this first pass through my timeline is to nail two things, my exposure and my contrast ratio, okay? I'm not gonna do anything else beyond those things, and the only tools that I'm going to use to make those adjustments are my offset, my gain, and my lift. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna make a couple of empty sort of template nodes here. We'll call this first one exposure. I'm gonna make a new serial node, option S, and we'll call this one ratio, okay? Now I'm just gonna tap back over to node number one, and before I even begin adjusting anything, I'm actually gonna to go to my light box view, and I'm gonna to scroll to this shot that I was parked on, and I'm gonna hit Command A to select everything. Now I'm gonna right click on this shot, shot number nine, and I'm gonna say apply grade. Now what this is gonna do is ripple out what we could think of as a template node tree onto every single shot in my timeline. These nodes are not actually doing anything, but they're labeled, they're templated, they are set up for me to go in and do the same operations on every single shot in this first pass, which is my goal. So let's take a look at how this is gonna play out practically. 
I'm going to go over here to shot number one and maybe go in a little bit deeper to shot number three where I'm actually seeing a face. And all I'm going to evaluate is how's my exposure. Exposure looks pretty good. I'll nudge it a little up or down to see if I can sweeten it, maybe down just a hair. Ratio looks pretty good as well. I'm going to bring my gain down a little bit, which is going to lower my contrast in the high end. And that's it. I'm done. Over here to shot number four. This is just a really quick cut shot. Maybe I'll trim my exposure in just a hair. Now let's go to shot number five. Exposure maybe comes down a hair, and then maybe I'm going to drop my shadows just a little bit. Okay. I'm just quickly adjusting my overall exposure and then the ratio of shadows to highlights using this ratio node. And I'm going to keep buzzing through every shot in my timeline and doing this exact same maneuver, just making sure that I've got exposure exactly where I want it and ratio exactly where I want it before I move on to the next shot and repeat the process. And this is the pace at which I will move through this timeline. And when I get to the spot that you see me landing for each of these shots, I'm very happy. All I care about for this first pass is getting my color management, getting my overall look, and nailing my exposure and my ratio. And I can continue to do all the many other things that I know I'm going to want to do at a later date. In the case of this shot, I'm going to save myself some work and middle click on shot number six because I already graded this wide. And now I'm good and I can move on from there. I'm trying to move through this timeline and these shots as quickly as I possibly can. I just want to get exposure and ratio on their feet. So you can see this is kind of my flow going through each one of these shots. And I'm just going to work on sweetening those two aspects, not because these are the only things that I'm concerned about, but because these are the most important adjustments that I will make in this grade. What's your color management? What's your look? Where's your exposure? And where's your ratio? These things are going to have a huge hand in the overall character of your grade. And if you can nail them, you're going to be in an ideal position for anything that you want to do after this. So just to be clear, I've still got lots more work to do. After I finish this first pass, I'm not even ready to put this timeline in front of my client yet, but I have gotten a huge portion of my foundation in place by focusing on these couple of critical fundamental adjustments that are going to have the greatest impact on the overall character of my grade. And you can see as I've continued to flip through this timeline that I can get through all of that rather quickly if I'm prioritizing the right things. So that's what I wanna to suggest to you guys that you emphasize for your first pass in any grading workflow. Get the color management, get a look, and then take a lightning round lap and nail your exposure and your contrast ratio, and then plan to take many subsequent laps to dial in the other important aspects of a good grade, which we are going to continue to talk about throughout this series. If you've made it this far into the video, there's a good chance you think I'm totally nuts. Three knobs? Why in the world would we limit our creativity and deny ourselves the dozens of powerful tools available to us within Resolve? The reason is simple. By forcing ourselves to push these tools as far as we can, we get cleaner, more consistent, and more organic results than by reaching for every knob that calls to us. If you can get into the habit of focusing your first pass on exposure and contrast ratio, I guarantee you're going to see improvements in your grades and you're going to be in an ideal spot for part two of this series where we're going to focus on color balance. See you then.